Hey guys. Um, so in honor of the Wizard of Oz where we left off, I've got my winged monkeys hanging out behind me. Um, so we're going to be reading chapters 11. And if you, uh, if you're having trouble keeping up with where we're at and what's going on, um, just so you know, here's the whole flow of the story. Um, the, the last part we read was, uh, Dorothy and her, and our crew were heading to the west, and the Wicked Witch gets wind of them coming. So she does this spell with this crazy hat she has that summons the flying monkeys. And um, the flying monkeys are instructed to kill everyone except the lion. It doesn't say why, but evidently the witch wants the lion for some reason. But when the monkeys get there, uh, they see that she's protected. Dorothy's protected with the kiss on her forehead from the uh, Glinda the Good Witch. And so they bring back Dorothy and they bring back the lion. They drop uh, the Tin Man on some rocks and bang him up really good. And they rip apart the Scarecrow and put his put his pieces like in a tree. It's pretty mean. And then uh, Dorothy is brought back to the Wicked Witch's place, and she's made to do um, she's made to do chores. And um, the witch is trying to get the slippers, but she can't figure out a time when um, when she's taking them off, except when she's asleep or I guess taking a bath or whatever is what it said. And so she sets up this uh, trap. She makes like an invisible piece of iron in the middle of the the kitchen and Dorothy trips over it and when she does the witch comes after her but she has a, a mop bucket from where she's been doing her chores and she throws it on the wicked witch and it causes her to melt um then they meet the good people of um of the west they were called the winkies w-i-n-k-i-e-s the winkies help them find uh Dorothy or help them find the Tin Man and the Scarecrow, and they put them back together. So now we are in, uh, we're in chapter nine, or chapter 11, oops, sorry. This one's called The Winged Monkeys. All right. The Winged Monkeys. You may remember that there was no road between the castle of the Wicked Witch and Emerald City. The Winged Monkeys had brought Dorothy and the lion to the castle. We have surely lost our way, the scarecrow said, after they had been walking for a while. Dorothy looked inside the golden cap. There she saw some words on the cap's lining. Now she knew what to do. Dorothy put the cap back on. She said the same words that the wicked witch had used. E P P Kaki Hilo Holo Hello Z Zui Zik. I said it again. That it, that's what it says. Check out my teeth. Ah, they go. Look at my teeth. I eat too much candy. The sound of the wings filled the air, and the band of the winged monkeys landed before them. The leaders bowed low to Dorothy. What is your command? he asked. We wish to go to Emerald City, said Dorothy. No sooner had he, she had spoken than the two monkeys caught her in the arms. More monkeys carried the scarecrow and the woodman and the lion. One little monkey picked up Toto and flew after them. In no time, Dorothy looked down and saw the shiny green walls of Emerald City. The monkeys set the travelers down and ca carefully... Well, there's a picture of them carrying them at the gate and flew off as fast as they appeared. So they can be nice when they don't want to rip the scarecrow in pieces and drop the tin man on the ground. Anyways, Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin woodman and the lion walked up and rang the bell. The guardian of the gates opened the gate as before. He gave them spectacles before taking them through the gate and on the palace of Oz. The soldier with the green beard was still there. He had the news of their return carried straight to Oz, but Oz made no reply. 
There was no word from him the exact day or the next. At last, the scarecrow asked the soldier to take another message to Oz. It said that if he did not see them, they would call on the winged monkeys to help them. So, so they go, you got to think, like, they, they were told by Oz if they killed the Wicked Witch, then he would grant all their wishes. And so they get there, and, they, and he makes them wait two days. He doesn't even, like, send word to come see him. That's messed up, man. And uh, basically what gets his attention, I'm guessing, is um, the Scarecrow says, look, if you, don't, if you don't let us in, if you don't come see us um, and give us what we've earned, then we're going to call them winging monkeys back. The wizard sent word for them to come to the throne room the next morning. Evidently, he's scared of the monkeys. After they arrived at the throne room, Dorothy and her friends were surprised when they saw no one. Presently, they heard a voice. It seemed to come from somewhere near the ceiling. I am Oz, the great and the terrible. Why do you seek me, said the voice. We have come to claim your promise, said Dorothy. Is the wicked witch really destroyed? asked the voice. Yes, Dorothy answered. I melted her with a bucket of water. Dear me, said the voice. How sudden. Well, come back tomorrow. I must have time to think it over. At this, the lion gave a roar. Roar! So fierce that Toto jumped away in alarm. He tipped over a screen that stood in the corner. The screen fell over with a crash. All right, so now we are in chapter 12, the discovery of Oz the Terrible. So let's change our background. We're going to go with Oz. Whoa, check that dude out. Got Oz behind me. There he is. And I got golden teeth. Yo! Yo, 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 check out my golden teeth. Yeah. All right. That's enough. Ah, fire off. The Discovery of Oz the Terrible, Chapter 12. Behind the fallen screen was a little man with a bald head and a wrinkled face. He looked as surprised as they were. Who are you? The Tin Woodman cried. Um, I am Oz, the great and the terrible, said the little man in a trembling voice. Aren't you a great wizard? asked Dorothy. Hush, said the lion. Don't speak so loud or you will be overheard. I am supposed to be a great wizard. But aren't you really? Dorothy asked again. Not a bit, the man replied sadly. I'm just a common man. You're more than that, said the scarecrow. You're a humbug. Exactly so. Humbug means you're a, you're a fake. You're a fraud. Exactly so, agreed the little man. I am a humbug. But, said Dorothy, I don't understand. How did you disappear? How did you appear as a great head? That was one of my tricks, answered Oz. Step this way and I'll show you. He led them to a small chamber. Sorry, I, was, I meant to switch the picture there's oz right there hiding behind this this panel that's one of my tricks answered oz step this way and i will show you he held them to a, he led them to a small chamber in the back of the throne room in one corner lay the great head it was made out of paper right here there's the big head I hung this from the ceiling by a wire, said Oz. Then I stood behind the screen and pulled a thread to make the eyes open and the mouth open like a puppet. That's messed up, dude. But how about the voice, Dorothy asked. I am a ventriloquist, said the little man. I can throw the sound of my voice wherever I wish. Next, he showed them the dress and the mask. He had worn when he was the lovely lady that the scarecrow saw. 
Dude couldn't tell. You couldn't tell that that was a that was a little old man inside. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the Tin Woodman tremble. Uh, the Tin Woodsman terrible beast was nothing but animal skin sewn together. As for the ball of fire, it was just a ball of cotton and oil that was poured on it and lit with a match. Really? said the scarecrow. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I am. I certainly am. Yeah, you're ashamed because you got caught. Messed up. Answered the man. But it was the only thing I could do. Sit down and I will tell you my story. So they sat down and listened while he told the following tale. I was born in Omaha. The little man uh, started. Omaha is in um, is in Nebraska. So if you're thinking about Kansas, Kansas is in the middle of the United States. Nebraska is not far at all. It's it's in the Midwest, and it's right above it. It's right north. Why, that isn't very far from Kansas, Dorothy exclaimed. When I grew up, I became a ventriloquist, Oz went on. After a time, I tried, I tired of that. I became a balloonist. One day, I went up in a balloon, and the ropes got twisted couldn't come down the balloon went way way up above the clouds for a day and a night i traveled through the air when i awoke the balloon was floating over a strange and beautiful country the balloon came down and the people here thought i was a great wizard and wanted me to be their leader i had them build this city then i thought that as the country is so green i could call it emerald city to make the name fit even better, I had everyone wear green spectacles so that everything they see is green. Man, he's just a big phony. But isn't everything here green? asked Dorothy. No more than in any other city, replied Oz. But when you wear green spectacles, of course everything looks green. I have been good to people and they like me one of my only fears has been the witches the witches of the north and the south are good the witches of the east and west are terribly wicked so you can imagine how pleased i was when i heard your house had fallen on the wicked witch of the east when you come to me when you came to me dorothy i was willing to promise anything if you would only do away with the other wicked witch and you succeeded. However, I'm ashamed to say that I cannot keep my promises. So they did, they did what he asked. They did what the, the wizard asked and they've come to find out that he's no wizard at all. He's a big phony. He's from um, our earth. He's from Nebraska and he's, he's tricked everyone. The Emerald city isn't even green. He just, they wear these spectacles these green tinted glasses that makes everything look green on the inside. Um, pretty messed up. Okay, so now we're in the truth. So let me choose my background. We're gonna go with the classic. Got my friend, the Ten Woodsman, got Dorothy, I got Scarecrow, and then there is the Cowardly Lion. Hey guy. Okay, the truth. Dorothy and her friends looked at the little man in shock. Can't you give me brains? asked the scarecrow. Truthfully, you don't need brains, Oz told him. You are learning something every day. That may be true, said Scarecrow, but I shall be very unhappy unless you give me brains. The false wizard looked at him. Well, he said with a sigh, I'm not much of a magician. But if you will come to me tomorrow morning, I will stuff your head with brains. Oh, thank you. Thank you, cried the scarecrow. What about my courage? Asked the lion. You have plenty of courage, asked Oz, or answered Oz. All you need is confidence. There is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. True courage is facing danger when you are afraid, and that kind of courage you have 
plenty. So he just hits him with some truth. Sorry, I didn't turn the page. He says right here, this is what I just read. All you need is confidence. There is no living thing. Everything gets scared, he's saying. Everything in this world gets scared. There is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. True courage is facing danger when you are afraid, and that kind of courage, you have plenty. So he, he's saying right here in this part of the book that you have plenty of, of courage. You, you just need the confidence in your abilities. Every time you've gotten in a fight or been scared or had to face something or do something, you've, you've come out tough, you know, and, and we've seen that over and over again. Like he's had courage this whole time and he didn't even realize it. Perhaps, but I'm scared just the same, said the lion. I shall be very unhappy unless you give me some sort of courage that makes one forget he's afraid. Very well, I'll give you that sort of courage tomorrow, replied Oz. How about my heart, asked the tin woodman. You are wrong to want a heart, answered Oz. It makes most people unhappy, but come tomorrow. And now, said Dorothy, how am I to get back to Kansas? We shall have to think about that, replied the little man. Give me two or three days to consider the matter. I will try to find a way to carry you over the desert. There is only one thing I ask in return. You must keep my secret. What? Are you asking something again? I already killed the witch for you. I already did, I already did what you, you asked me to do. And now you want me to keep your secret? They all agreed and went back to their rooms in high spirits. Even Dorothy had hope that the humbug would find a way to send her back to Kansas. If he did, she was willing to forgive him, forgive him everything, forgive him everything. Okay. Next morning, the scarecrow went to the throne room and rapped, opened the door. Come on in, said Oz. I have come for my brain, said the scarecrow. Sit down in the chair, Oz told him. The wizard unfastened the scarecrow's head, meaning he took it off. Weird. Emptied all the straw. He went into a back room and made a mixture of ban and pins and needles. Bran and pins and needles. The wizard filled the top of the scarecrow's head with the mixture. Then he stuffed the, the rest of the space with straw to hold it in place. When he replaced the scarecrow's head on his body, the scarecrow was pleased. He thanked Oz and went back to his friends. Dorothy looked at Scarecrow curiously. How do you feel? She asked. I feel wise, indeed, he answered. Now I will go and get my heart, said the woodman. So. He puts in bran, pins, and needles. He stuffs his head with nothing, just needles. It's, but the fact that he puts something in there makes the scarecrow feel like he actually has brains. So basically, this is another example of how the um, Oz is tricking. I mean, he's basically tricking them. He's tricking their mind. He said you had brains all along, and... And so now he's tricking them. Okay. Now I will go and get my heart, said the woodman. In the throne room, Oz cut a small square in the left side of the tin woodman's chest. Then he fetched a red silk heart stuffed with sawdust. Oz put the heart in the woodsman's chest and replaced the square of tin. He saw, soldered it together. There, said Oz. Now you have a heart that any man might be proud of. I am very grateful. So down here, it's funny, he's still wearing his emerald goggles in this whole situation, even though we know that it's fake. Um, he's putting the heart inside the tin woodsman chest, which basically is silk, um, which is, you know, a fabric. It's really soft and made of sawdust. Sawdust is just bits of wood that have come off uh, a saw. I am very grateful, claimed the 
exclaimed the woodman and went back to his friends. Now the lion went to the throne room for his courage. Oz went to the cupboard and took down a green bottle. He gave it to the cowardly lion and bade him to drink. The lion, let me turn the page. The lion drank until the bottle was empty. How do you feel? asked Oz. Full of courage, replied the lion. He went joyfully back to his friends. Oz smiled. How can I help being a humbug? He said to himself, when people make me do things that everybody knows can't be done. So Oz says right here, how can I help being a humbug? People make me a humbug because all these people already had, they had these things within them. I just, I made them feel like something's different. Like, but they, they, this is like a lesson on life. This is the, this is what the book wants to teach you. You have the power within you the whole time. No one has to do anything to change you. You, you already are changed if you want to be. And uh, you have all the talents. You have everything you need within yourself. So don't go looking for an Oz to fix your problems. Um, don't go on some crazy journey to fix your problems. You have the ability to fix them right here, right now. So anyways, how can I help being a humbug? He said to himself, when people make me do things that everybody knows can't be done, but it will take more than imagination to carry Dorothy back to Kansas. So this is the one thing he's saying I can't fake. I can fake courage, I can fake brains, and I can fake the heart, but Dorothy, I can't fake. And I got to figure out how to, to fix this. So um, we have one, two, three chapters left. Three chapters left to finish up the uh the the book we'll be reading chapter 14 next time i want to post a quiz so after you've finished listening and reading this book uh with me uh make sure you take the quiz and uh have a wonderful day see ya maybe if i can figure out